Dennis Quaid here on the Rich Eisen Show. Okay, so we have a game we like to play with uh, folks uh, with a filmography as vast as yours called Celebrity True or False, where okay. we hear things about uh, the history of your career, whether they're true or not, just because they're on the huh. Internet. Ready for that? Can we do it? Okay. And we have some excellent uh, production value to go I'll along with I'll do my it. best. Hit it. Hit it. Celebrity true or false. You can't handle the truth. There you go. It's a little Jack Nicholson mm -hmm. for you. Have you ever been in a movie with Jack? Uh, my very first movie set was watching Jack Nicholson and Marlon Brando in Missouri Breaks. Wow. What? My brother was in it, and I drove his car up to Montana, and I was fresh from Houston. Still had turnip leaves on my shoulders. And uh, there I am watching Marlon Brando and Jack Nicholson. What the he hell was is that? Very, like? Jack was a really, he's a very generous guy with himself. We were over at his house just about every night, and... Uh, you know, I was new. He gave me a lot of great advice and just a great guy. Wasn't your brother in the last detail with him? That's too? right. Yeah. What a movie that is. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, that's not one of the first movies you hear mentioned with Jack Nicholson, but it is yeah. spectacular. It was, your it brother was, spectacular it, in it as he well. He really was. He was nominated for Academy Award for that. <sighs> so Jack would just say, come on over, hang out? Yeah. Like, he was, uh, you know, he was, like I said, he was very generous with himself and, uh, Really funny and uh, very real. And he was very appreciative. He really liked being a movie star. What does that mean? Well, everything that went with it. You know, the trailer, just being on the set. He loved he loved making movies. You could just feel his enthusiasm uh, for, for his profession. Mm. You know? That's pretty cool. That is really cool. All right, first one up for you, Dennis Quaid, celebrity, true or false? Uh, true or false? You tested for the role of Luke Duke on the Dukes of Hazard. Yes, but Tom Wopat <laughs> got the gig. Is that it? I actually got the role. You did? Yes. Wow. And what happened? It was to be either role. You were either Duke. You I had your could choice be of Duke. Duke. Bro okay. And I didn't do it because I had just been to. Uh, well, I, I got offered that, and then I went to a meeting with Peter Yates about breaking away. And uh, Peter Yates said, don't do it. You, gotta, you need to be in this movie. And he was right. But at the same time, you know, that's it's kind of iconic. You could have been in the General Lee, yeah. huh? Yeah, could yeah. have. Okay. I could be driving General Lee right now. <laughs> you could be doing that. <laughs> well, so you, you, instead you wrote a bicycle. John and I are, are, are friends, actually. Okay. No, yeah, I saw him a couple of months ago. Great guy. Okay. So yeah. you had your choice of being either Duke. I love that. So that's true. All right. Uh, true or false, uh, Dennis Quaid? You were an extra in Stripes. Uh, yes, but I didn't know that I was. My wife, <laughs> then, then wife, PJ Souls, uh, was you know, uh, one of the two girls that was in it. Right. And uh, I visited the set, and I was just roaming around where they were shooting, but <laughs> they caught me in the background of something, and so because of Screen Actors Guild or whatever, they had to <laughs> list me as a credit. <laughs> Is this the scene you were you were caught in, where you were, where, where it was the, uh, yes. that's the scene right yeah, there? Yeah, but where... I still... That's the, the life fact, of me. Jack. Cannot find myself. So you're in there somewhere. <laughs> somewhere I'm in the lineup. I'm in there, and I'm not wearing green or whatever. And you know, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's the fact, Jack. I mean, okay. Why I'm not getting residuals for that? I, <laughs> gonna, I'm going to investigate. Thank you. So that's why, you, if you look at your filmography, you're an extra in stripes. It's just you were just strolling yeah, around, amazing. right? Do you have any good memories of Bill Murray on that set? Oh, or? he's he's fabulous. I mean, they would they would load up a camera. That that's when they had real film back then. It yeah. would be a, like a thousand feet of film that will go for like fifteen minutes, and he would just improvise and just go on and just mm. it was like gold. Everything that came out of his mouth, that you would be howling about. You oh know? my gosh! The I'd love to see guy. That. So that it must yeah. exist somewhere, right? That all that footage must yes. exist somewhere. I'm sure. Stripes outtakes. I would I love to see that. that. All right, yes. next up, celebrity true or false, Dennis Quaid. True or false, Chuck Yeager took you and your colleagues on flights to prepare for the right stuff. Well, he took me on a flight. I got my pilot's license during uh, the right stuff. I was very secretive about it. Why? Uh, well, because you were not supposed to fly when you're when you're doing a movie. You know, they... Well, you... You're not supposed to parachute, ride a motorcycle, anything, you know. <laughs> well, where you could get hurt. I was taking flying lessons because I met my real astronaut, Gordo Cooper. He 
turned out he was a hero of mine when I was a kid. He turned out he lived three miles from me in uh, the valley in L.A., and he turned me on to this Bud Wallen over at uh, Van Nuys Aviation, and Bud, who was 74 at the time, he was three years younger than aviation itself. That's right. I figured, you the guy <laughs> where you can solo if you want to, but you don't have to. So, but I got my license during that, and uh, Jaeger, uh, one day I had a bonanza out there on the set, one of the, what they call doctor killers, the V-tails, mm-hmm. and uh, took me up flying over the lake bed and over Edwards Air Force Base. Holy cow. It was, it was incredible. It did, was great. Did he floor it? What? At one point? It was, it was you know, the... Really, flying is all about landing more than anything else. <laughs> it really yes, is. I can understand it's that. It's easy to fly. <laughs> it's hard to land. <laughs> to land. And uh, <laughs> it was just, uh, he just loved it. He was, he was uh, checked out, I think, at that time in 192 separate aircraft. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, people are really good at experience. Maybe they have five or six. 192. I mean, the only and a lot of them had X on them. I bet. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, 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 oh, wow. The only thing I think that could be anything that I've ever experienced close to it was riding in the back of an Indy car uh, driven by Mario Andretti. Yeah. You know, and the Long Beach course. Yeah. You know, where where I I, I was just like with a with a it's, legend, right, of yeah. speed in his own yeah. world. It's a whole other thing. I'm what, sure. Why do they even call it driving, right? <laughs> Because I couldn't imagine how we else. got so close to the walls, yeah. and and I was on a GoPro, so I just like don't look scared. That's all I wanted to make sure is I didn't yeah. look scared. <laughs> but I can only imagine, well, like climbing into a cockpit, right, with uh, Chuck Yeager. Well, that was a, that was a bonanza. I did go uh, on a uh, practice uh, with the uh, Blue Angels down mm-hmm. in El Centro, where they you know where they train uh-huh. and stuff, and that was that was really something, you know, because you get the whole. Yeah, the, the whole formation there, and I'm, I'm sit. They go through the whole flight with their eyes closed, talking it through, and then you go up and you're pulling eight G's, hmm. and they're 18 inches off each other's wings. Oh my god! You know, doing 500 miles per hour, and sometimes they call it rubbing when they touch. When they t- <laughs> and so it's it's uh, that was that was a blast. <laughs> but yeah, and uh, it was worth the throw up. It really was. I was going to ask if you, <laughs> you did you did you did lose it. You yeah, did. I did. Yeah. They, no shame for some reason, did, did not give me a G suit. <laughs> you know, G suit it squeezes down and keeps the blood, yeah. you know, in your head. Sure. And I would black out every once in a while. I, I bet Dennis Quaid, celebrity, true or false. Next up, your character in any given Sunday, Cap Rooney. His house is yes. really Dan Marino's yes, house. Yes, it was. Yeah, it was Dan Marino's. So when I'm watching any given Cap, Sunday in yeah. your house, that's yeah, really Dan that's Marino's really Dan house. Marino's house. I mean his. Trophy room was, wow! I mean, you can't art, you can't art decorate that thing. Because, so that uh, really was that those were Dan Marino's those trophies. All Dan Marino's things, yeah, yeah. Huh. He was nice enough to. That's cool. Was Dan there? Uh, yeah, he came to the set. Yeah. Did you pick up anything from Marino? What do you think? I took a football. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I should hold on a minute. I Not should really, have been a little bit more detailed. Let me <laughs> rephrase. Yeah, rephrase. Did you get any tips on quarterbacking from Dan Marino? Dennis Quaid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's like, wait a minute. What happened to that game ball from the AFC yeah, Championship yeah, I, I game? Think somebody said something about I couldn't throw a cat out of a window, but all right. Nice. <laughs> So that really is his house. Yes, it was. So how did that happen? Is he just like tight with Oliver Stone? We were, or yeah, I guess or? so. You know, okay. Oliver had a way. <laughs> Can we use your Everybody house, thought, Dan? Hey, Dan? Oliver Oliver did such an incredible in my opinion, that is the best football movie ever done. Why do you think? Because you can feel it. Mm-hmm. It's visceral. You can you can feel uh yeah. the hits and the the stories uh behind it. Uh feel real the nfl uh pulled their, their endorsement uh of it which kind of at the time spoke that it was pretty real <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. uh because it was kind of a behind the scenes look but you could and i you know oliver with 
you know, his reputation and stuff, I thought somebody was really going to get hurt on this thing because he's going to just go all out, which we did. But nobody got hurt. So you were Evan. really you were really playing? Is that what you're saying when you were going all out? What do you mean? Yeah, we, we, we were all like out there playing, and you know, half of the half of the actors were professional f- football players. Well, Jim Brown, but, right? Or yeah, Lawrence Taylor. Taylor. Okay, yeah, yeah, Tios. Yeah. Well, movie. what I remember is is Oliver didn't show up to the set till about like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. He'd have like a seven o'clock call, but he would show up, you know, somewhere around noon sometimes. Because <laughs> he's Oliver Stone. And so uh, Jimmy Woods, uh, myself, Lawrence Taylor, and Jim Brown would be over at Doral every morning at sunup. And we played a grudge match of for some for. Yeah, about three months straight. It was wow. it was blast. You so would you you just different pair ups? Yeah, we played same, all, uh, same foursome, different pair ups. No, it was it was pressing, it was always pressing? it was always we were playing singly all the time. Okay, yeah, that's what we play. And who was the best player? You? Oh, I was for sure. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I think I had, no, I think I had the lowest handicap. Lawrence Taylor was really good. Okay, he was he actually had a lower handicap than I was. He could. He wore two gloves, and he would play in flip flops and, sh- <laughs> and and you know beach shorts. And uh, Jim Brown was a uh, he was he was a solid player, and he and I had a real grudge match. And to have I mean the best defensive player ever and the best offensive player ever. And they're out there. <laughs> you did not want to get into an argument with Jim Brown because. He would take it. I bet to the limit. <laughs> I can't one imagine of greatest, it. one wow. of the greatest individuals to ever grace this earth, Jim I, Brown. I I have so many great stories about Jim Brown that I'm fortunate to have been around him and yeah. uh, to have met him and um and um you know one of my favorite stories I'll I'll tell you um <clears throat> that I picked up one of my first days I was on the job for NFL Network. Um, I asked Merlin Olson. The great Merlin Olson of the fearsome force of the L.A. Rams defensive line, the hardest he ever hit somebody, and he said it was Jim Brown. That they they were talking of when the Browns were coming into the Coliseum, that Jim Brown was never never got a good lick on him, and they were talking Deacon and Merlin mm. and you know Rosie Greer. They were all talking all week long. Right. Like they're gonna whoever gets the hit on Jim Brown, you're gonna be lucky. And one of the first snaps, Brown comes around the end, and he's and Merlin Olson's got him clear. And he lays into him, and he said, I have visions. I'm going to get up and see Jim's eyes rolling in the back of his head. And, and Merlin got up and watched Jim go 70 more yards for the touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the greatest stories I've ever that heard. That was the way he would make you pay, man. It would be like, I've seen the film. It's like seven guys hanging off this uh, <laughs> him. And, uh, you know, uh, he's... Uh, what the, he worked on, he was around on the Express too. You know, the, the, we sure. did it the, from Syracuse, and yes. so he was around for that as well. And uh, so I kind of had a kind of a long and storied relationship with him. I bet. Yeah. Last one for you: true or false? The scene in the Rookie where Jimmy walks out to the mound for the first time at the ballpark in Arlington actually was filmed during the seventh inning stretch of a game. Yeah, it was. That was like that's what's great about being an actor, man. Going in. Doors that say authorized personnel only. <laughs> being out, being out on the bullpen, you know, there at Texas Stadium, and you know, it's having that kind of kid's fantasy, really. You know, of, of running into, uh, jogging into, a take the mound, and uh, you know, there's like fifty thousand people in the stands. Did they let them know beforehand? Hey, we're about to film. So I think round so, of but you know, they serve a lot of beer there. I don't know. If <laughs> <laughs> it's right around the cutoff. You know, okay. I just want to make it to home plate. That's, you know, and uh, I mean, I didn't throw 100 miles per hour. In fact, I never put myself on a radar gun because mm-hmm. I, I didn't want to be so disappointed. And uh, but uh, I just wanted to look like I, I could. Well, but you did. That was really a thrill. Just to really come out of the th- pen. Yeah. And an actual get to do that. At a major league baseball park, take uh, a mound. Yeah. And um, and so you only had a couple minutes, right? They're not going to hold up the game to yeah, make that sure that you're getting you know, the shot, so we right? Just went out there and pitched, and you know. did you did you wave to the crowd at the end? Yeah. Did you tip your cap? Yeah, damn straight. Yeah, I was in character. <laughs> I just, I just went. even if you weren't in character, uh, <laughs> I'd have I'd have waved around. Thanks, everybody. 
Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.